Hello everybody, welcome to the Han Online Open Day. My name is Olga, I'm a fourth year communication student here, and welcome. Today we're going to talk about student stories. I have a few guests here with me, could you guys introduce yourselves? Um, hello everyone, my name is Wing Lu, but I also go with the name Patrick. I'm from Vietnam, and I'm also the fourth year communication student at the Han. Nice to meet you all. Hello everybody, my name is Buriana, I'm from Bulgaria, and I'm a first year international student at the Han. I'm majoring in life sciences and I'm very excited for this session. Okay, cool. So now we're going to use our magic jar with the questions and take our turns and do it first. Yeah. So, Patrick. Alright. So the see. first question is, what students' associations can you join? Um, that's a good question. So when you uh, arrive to this country, you don't just go to university and go to class, but also there are associations that have activities and other things you can do outside of the classroom. And there are many associations, and um, some organized by the, uh, the university itself, some organized by, uh, founded by the students, and you have a workshop, um, how do you say it, parties, mm -hmm. and uh, guest lecture, uh, uh, Movie night as well. There's uh, and also a uh, field trip. I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that uh, there's just a few on top of my head. I think you can uh, support me with this question. Yeah, as well. of course. Uh, in Nijmegen, because we have two universities there, and so there are lots of student associations. Some of them being ESN <coughs> or DITO, and they organize so many events, like the field trips, as you said. Sometimes book clubs. I participate in it, so I can speak <laughs> from personal experience. Sometimes like. Uh, painting and wine or, you know, like cra arts and crafts, stuff like that. It's so much fun indeed and you meet so many new people that have the same experience as you. Definitely, yeah. And I can say that, for instance, when it comes to studying in Arnhem, in the International School of Business, here we have a separate thing which is called ISB Community. And I personally go here the most because um, as a communication student, you're always in that building and you always go back and forth and see the base camp where most of the events happen. So for instance, I joined the wine and paint recently and that was super fun. You were just talking, chatting, painting and uh, yeah, exploring. I have a last input actually. So you don't really have to join the associations to join those activities. You can just uh, uh, sign up and mm -hmm. subscribe and then go there or you can be a part of the organization and help organizing. So it depends on what you want to organize or you want to join, or maybe you just change every once in a while. So the options are open for you. That's true. That's yeah. true, actually. Okay. okay. You want to go next? The second question now. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. The second question is, mm, what is the cost of living per month? Good one. Mm. Okay. Um, well, I can start. Can so the general um, spending per month could vary from eight nine hundred to a thousand one hundred two hundred, excluding the um, the tuition fee. So you will have around three fifty to five hundred uh, per average for rent, and then one fifty to two hundred for. Um, where you groceries, groceries. Yeah. and then on top of that you have a leisure, uh, leisure time, train, uh, transportation in general, and um, what, do you, what do you call it, uh, insurance as well, so mm -hmm. other miscellaneous thing. Um, is there yeah. anything else that I haven't covered? Well, like personal expenses, parties and stuff like that. Yeah. That, that depends on the lifestyle of a person, mm, so I would say that it's different. Gym as well, yeah, yeah sport. <laughs> If, you, if you're into that, <laughs> then yes. <laughs> Trying. But really, Trying 200 too. for groceries, I would say, like, the like very maximum. I think in general, you can go with so much less, even if you uh, shop in, like, Albertine, which is, like, the, you know, <laughs> yeah. the more expensive one. And yeah. when I say groceries, it's not just food, but also uh, detergent and, and cleaning. Like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. True. yeah. So. That's true. Yeah, so I think it just differs per person for your lifestyle and where you live, how much mm -hmm. you can, your accommodation costs. So just come prepared, try to maybe um, set a budget for yourself before coming True. here to understand, okay, this amount of money I want to spend on my housing, which you will know beforehand, and this amount of money I want to spend for my personal expenses and groceries and stuff. Yeah. So yeah. 
But, oh, but maybe we, we can mention that actually if you cook for yourself, it's going to be much cheaper than if you True. eat out because mm -hmm. in the restaurant it's kind of expensive, right? Like yeah. meals yeah. are... So it around the cheap restaurant or fast food it could maybe 8 euro and then could go to over 30 if you go to a restaurant restaurant. Mm -hmm. But what are you, the price of a sandwich at, at, at the university, I think is four? around 4 or 5 four euro. Euros? Yeah, so there you, you can see the... Can imagine the the cost of living here, and yeah. the the coffee could be from two to five euro. Depends on how much how big the cup is, of course, and how much <laughs> topping you put on top. But yeah, um, Mams is the coffee that you usually go to, oh, right? Oh yes, that's my favorite one. Uh, yeah, that's the coffee place in Arnhem where most of the students who study at the um, uh, Hanpart in Arnhem go to to study, prepare for exams, just in general, talk to one another, and. Um, yeah, coffee there costs yeah about three euros. I'd say maybe four if it's mm -hmm. like a crazy topping situation. <laughs> but yeah, you can always just find your way around, find the coffee places that are good but cheaper, find the ones that are more high end if you're really into coffee. So yeah, there are options for everybody. Great. That's great. That's great. Okay, I'll go next. Let's see. How do you get around in the city and outside the city? That's a good one, okay. actually. Well, so, oh, okay, go ahead, go first. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Feel free. So, me personally, I go everywhere with a bike because I live close to the uni, sort of, in uh, Nijmegen, but still, like, most of my friends, friends also go around with bikes because there is bike lanes everywhere. At least this mm -hmm. part is very well thought in the Netherlands. It's, it's great because it's kind of like doing some sports at the same time and yeah. moving from place to place. But for example, now we're in Arnhem. So in order to get here, I needed to use the, the train, which is also like every the transport in the Netherlands is so good. Like you can get everywhere, wherever you want. And it's so convenient. And so there are stops, multiple stops in one, in one city uh, mm -hmm. when, you, when it comes to also bus, right? The bus, you can go everywhere by bus. Uh, so yeah, it's very well thought in my opinion. It's super easy, I agree. Yeah. It's very convenient. The maximum you only have to walk like 10 minutes for when you get off the a public transportation, tra like a bus, to your destination. So you sh shouldn't be worried about um, n not getting there in time or you have to walk a long distance. And also, you only need one car to go on all transportation. So mm -hmm. I think that's a very convenient uh, point of view as well like definitely yeah they don't have to carry around everything for different yeah. points of it's transport. all planned yeah planned for you no i think that dutch people are so punctual that they wouldn't ever make it in a way that you wouldn't be on time and it wouldn't be easy to go from one place yeah. to another so yeah it's very easy and you can always find your way around and if you are lost or whatever, there are so many apps you can use yep. for the schedules, public transportation. For instance, for the trains, there's the NS app, which you can download and see all the trains and plan all of your trips. So, yeah. Super they easy. even encounter the time that you walk and uh, yeah, even that. You know, the directions and everything. So no, no worries. They try their best for you to not get lost and to be there yeah, in time. Definitely. Mm, yeah. yeah. All right, okay. I guess next I'll one. take the next one. Uh, so, do you need to know Dutch? Aha. Uh -huh. okay. Do you need to know Dutch? Well, I'd say short answer, no. But it's always, at least for me, it's always a thing that if I move somewhere, I want to learn the language which is spoken in that country, even if I don't really need to. It's kind of like an um, integration, socialization thing for me. I just really prefer doing that. And, and Dutch people are getting so happy when you're trying to <laughs> get a certain yeah. sentence or um, ask them how they are doing in Dutch. And yeah, but generally speaking, you don't. Even in supermarkets, traveling, whatever you're doing in the country, most people speak English. I think 98% or I would say around that. At least basic English, definitely. Mm -hmm. So to survive, you don't need to know Dutch. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually my answer for this question is uh, not necessarily. Of course, it's good that you go to a country and you speak the language. Mm -hmm. But here in the Netherlands, you can survive and you can find your way around 
without knowing the language. So don't be too uh, scared that uh, what, what? How should I go around? How should I go to to groceries without doing uh, knowing any Dutch? But yeah, you will be fine. You will be fine. Yeah. Um, is there anywhere we can learn Dutch? Uh, in, in yes, this indeed. I'm actually sign, I signed up for a course now. I'm very excited. Ooh. Just in a few days. Yeah, it's it's uh, the the social Dutch course that the Han provides and uh, the first, the basic level is free. So that's what I signed up for. And it gives you like, like the most important phrases stuff that you can use in the supermarket to like converse with people. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, I'm, I just, I really don't need to know Dutch indeed, but I just feel like if I live in a country, it's going to be so much easier for me than if I go back to Bulgaria and want to learn Dutch, then who would I speak to, you know? Sure. That's, I'm very excited for this one indeed. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yeah. next question. Who yeah, wants to go? It's your turn. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's see. What kind of jobs are common for students? Oh, I think you have more insight on this one. Job. Um, so, usually the job for students here are uh, revolve, uh, evolve around uh, the restaurant. So you can either work in the kitchen, work at the, as a bartender, work as a waiter or waitress, or worse as the food deliverer. And also their warehouse job, warehouse job as well. So that basically sum up uh, the majority of job that you can uh, work as a student. Me, myself, I usually, I, I used to be um, a waiter and also I deliver food as well. Okay. Do you have any experience? Yeah, um, for me it was mostly the jobs that were unrelated to restaurants, but that's mainly because since I study communication, I do a lot related to social media. So, uh, yeah, being the person I am, I was very eager to go and kind of practice straight away. So I went to from one coffee place to another asking people if they need help with social media. <laughs> and some of them said yes, some of them said no. But, yeah, I also have many friends who did, um, for instance, sushi. They worked at the sushi places and, like, really made everything. And it was so beautiful. I was so jealous yeah. that they know how to do it and I don't. <laughs> so, cool. yeah, it has its own benefits. And, um, yeah, I think it's super easy to find a job as a student in the Netherlands. I just realized you also can work for student associations or university oh, associations yeah, as well. So it's not really like a, a, a shift job kind of thing but more like project centered mm -hmm. so you can be yeah social media for for example the today the open days you can be uh, the photographer or this me right now the a guest speaker as yeah. well so yeah I, I think that's also because a kind of job that you can uh, enlist yourself and work yeah, yeah. definitely mm. good point Thank you, guys. That was been useful for me as a person who's only been here shortly. So you know, I don't You're have welcome. work experience yet. But yeah. okay, we can yeah. go to the next one. Maybe good luck. You can find one uh, soon. Maybe yeah. if you if you plan to, of course. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Magic jar. Let's see. Was it easy for you to meet new people and make friends? Hmm. Ooh. You just arrived, I think. Yeah, let's have yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, no. What um, is your experience? So, yes, indeed it was, because I actually put myself out there with the student associations. I really participated in many events that they uh, organized, and so I met lots of people, like lots of other students. But also, I think my most prominent friendships have been created during the introduction week of my program. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. that was definitely an experience. And my closest friends right now are from there, because, like, we had to sleep in tents for a whole week, like, not going <laughs> home, going around the city. It was a, just a different type of bonding with them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I definitely recommend, like, with both hands to everybody to try to sign up for their intro week, because I think that you're going to meet, like, your... A future classmates in advance and you'll be able to form a strong relationship with them. Yeah, definitely agree. Yeah, I also have really close friends from the introduction week in uh, both um, uh, times when I was studying because when I actually arrived in the Netherlands I was studying life science at first yeah. in Nijmegen oh. and uh, then I transferred to communication. So I have a little bit of experience in both places and I can say that the first time the intro week was amazing because I met so many friends and I was really scared because it was the first time in the Netherlands and instantly you have connections. And the second time when it was already about half a year in the country, still it was a new city, new, I don't know, setting. 
So Interweek was that kind of connection point where you can meet everybody and just yeah. basically they, they put you together. Yeah, to kinda. Friends, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to really like search for ways to meet friends. You're just there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But also the classes are very small, right? I don't know how it's in True. communication, so it's very easy to bond with people because it's not like big classes with 60 people. It's actually oh, like, yeah. what, 18 the most, something like that, in mm -hmm. one class. Yeah. yeah, yeah, true. I think that most of my really close friendships were with the people I was studying with because, you know, you do group projects, you work mm -hmm. together, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, interweek, studying together, and maybe sometimes the library. Because uh, when you are so annoyed uh, preparing for an exam and you are stressed and you don't know if you're going to do it on time and then you see another person struggling with exactly the same, <laughs> it just bonds you straight away. So those also are work my... friend as well. Um, yeah. yeah, you can have, make friend with uh, the people you work with at the... True, yeah. actually, true. So you have a lot of different environments where you can make friends. So don't worry about it. Basically, everyone here are from our international student, most, most of us, right? So we also in the same situation as you. We all come here all by ourselves, new to the country. So eventually you will connect and find great people to, to hang out with, to cook with, to yeah, drink coffee with, or to be stressed in the exam week yeah. with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, okay. I next look one. at the next one. Um, what are some fun things to do in the Netherlands? Oh, I just mentioned a few, right? Uh, yeah. So they are fun that you can have with friends, of course. Um, usually here, one of the things that I do the most when I hang out with friends is actually cooking together. So if we don't go out, we uh, will go to one uh, person's uh, place and then we just cook together. Usually. Uh, you hang out with, uh, let's see, I'm from Vietnam, right? I cook a lot of Vietnamese food for my uh, German and Dutch friend before, and uh, oof, I, they, they liked it. I hope they were, uh, they were honest. <laughs> Can I sign up to be your uh, friend? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> let's do that next week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so that's with friend, right? And also there's uh, activities with uh, integrated with the culture or the uh, upcoming, there's, um, there's King's Day. 27th yeah, of April, which is basically it's the king's birthday, right? And then it's a national-wide party yeah, uh, from everyone... the evening before to the day itself. And it's crazy. Everybody uh, in a happy uh, vibe, uh, good mood, music everywhere, orange uh, color oh, yeah. everywhere. Um, yeah, just you, you will be eventually forced to, not forced to, but like eventually emerge to the culture because you do yeah. go to, you step out of your room then you can feel the vibe already, to Definitely. be honest. Yeah, yeah uh, that's great. I'm excited for this one also, <laughs> because yeah. I'm going to a music festival with my friends. I'm excited to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Also, I want to go to the Tulips field, right? Next to <gasps> Amsterdam. Oh, yes. Yeah, that a, is on my to-do list there? as well. Kokenhof, Kokenhof I think. Kokenhof, yes. yes. Ooh, it's perfect a place. beautiful garden, basically. So, um, to sum up, there's, that's a lot of in the things that you can do, uh, because I don't know that that that's a lot of things because you have you you will go out with a lot of group of people and also there's a culture con festival kind of thing mm -hmm. here, so and and the nature is beautiful as well. The yes. the weather sometimes can be a little <laughs> bit uh, not uh, good because it's quite rainy here, but when the summer arrive, yes, that uh, this country is beautiful. Yeah, everything is blooming in spring. Yeah. Okay. All right. Should next one. Next one. Next one. Next one. There's very few left. Mm -hmm. You want to sketch <laughs> <laughs> What do you do in your weekends or evenings? Mm, okay, I can start with this one. Um, during the weekend, the weekdays, like there are two. So obviously one of them I decide to spend studying or catching up with school usually just so I don't feel bad about myself. And then the next day um, I would go out with my roommate or with friends or do something with um, like outside if the weather allows mm -hmm. or cooking with my roommate which I love because she's from China and I'm from Bulgaria and we like exchange cuisines and stuff and it's so much fun and uh, once we went to Germany with bikes the other time we went hiking you know it's it's always fun when 
Even when the weather is not good, though, like most of the time it was raining, but that doesn't stop us because we just want to have fun. And during the evenings, it really depends how much energy I have. If I have more energy, then yes, I will do some schoolwork. And if I don't, then I'll just cuddle, cuddle in bed uh, and, you know, read a book or like watch a movie or something. And sometimes there is the parties which are inconveniently always during the weekdays from the associations like Tuesday or something but doesn't matter you know it's you're you're young ones so mm -hmm. sometimes student experience yeah, yeah yes. true that's mm -hmm. true what about you guys uh for me I'd say yeah considering that now I'm doing my internship as a part of my program I work during most of the week and then um, evenings I'd say mostly Netflix <laughs> and a couch because, yeah, that's just what I have energy for after a full work day. But then sometimes I also go to the gym with my friends. That's like uh, my way of actually going to the gym, inviting other people to join me. <laughs> and uh, what else? Uh, yeah, well, I mentioned I like coffee, so coffee places is definitely my go-to. Um, yeah, and as for cooking... I think that for me it's mostly I like cooking fast and then doing something else afterwards. So yeah, I would say that's my typical evening. Yeah, I, I think you guys cover almost everything. I also have one activity that I do with friends. So after cooking together <laughs> and cleaning up, doing dishes, we also play board games together, and that's uh, that is something that is not really for me a common thing in my culture. So coming coming here, I just found out that there are like a thousand different board games and that you can uh, play w with your friends. And uh, yeah, if you, you are in already a setting like that, so why not, you know? And it's really fun. And um, I really, really, sometimes I feel like I look forward to that particular night during the week. Aww. Yeah, and then I think it's really sweet. That is really nice, yeah. yeah. Board, games, board games are awesome. It's just such a great way to spend your time and bond with other people. Exactly. Not Monopoly, though, I don't think. No, no, that's <laughs> that one. Nice. <laughs> I think it's a universal agreement that it's that not that game. It's not for bonding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Fun, though. Who's, okay. who's next? I well, think okay. me, right? Oh, yeah, yes. Well, okay. Let's see. What's one must have when living in the Netherlands? Umbrella. That's going to be my answer always. So. And a bike. Fair, yeah. Yeah, true. Even though you don't need to, yeah, you can definitely buy it here like secondhand and, uh, and stuff in raincoat, I think, because, because those, those, those two things don't go together. Like if you have a, an umbrella and a bike, you cannot ride a bike with the umbrella. So um, a raincoat. <laughs> If you don't want to become a little bit of a Mary Poppins in if, <laughs> turn. If you go with the wind and you know, you know, like a little sailing with your bike. Kind of um, also, um, as an Asian, you can also buy a rice cooker here. Uh, if you eat rice a lot, of course. Uh, you don't have to bring it from your home country. I did it and that was a mistake because it takes a lot of place in your suitcase. And you can just buy it here. It's relatively cheap for the, you know, for the price. And... Uh, yeah, I think that is also one tip that you, you shouldn't pack your, your rice cooker. I know your, your mom or your parents or your aunts <laughs> want you to do it. Just don't come here. You can buy one. No problem. Um, what else? I think the OV card is also a good thing. True. Um, mm. So for you, for those who don't know, the OV card is actually like a card for tran public transport here. Um, you will get more information when you arrive, but that, that one card that yellow, blue-ish card is uh, very convenient for you to live in this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I would say those are the actual must-haves. The rest mm -hmm. is really optional and depends on who you are and what you value when mm -hmm. you come to the Netherlands, which things are important for you to bring. But yeah, in general, I would say that most of the things that you might need for living here, you can get here. So yeah, just don't worry about it and bring whatever means to you the most. Maybe that would be my personal tip. If you are moving somewhere for the first time in your life, bring something that would give you comfort at first, mm. because maybe you need something to remind you of your home or your family or just your culture, anything really. But that one thing standing in your room would really bring you peace in the times when you're adjusting to the new culture. So 
That would be my favorite recommendation. Favorite blanket. Or, yeah, know, like a plushie. Instance, yeah. Oh, I brought a plushie with me. I brought yeah. the IKEA shark, and I was traveling with this whole thing in the plane, and everyone was thinking that I was crazy, but. Hey, that was something that actually helps me to readjust. So. What do you mean? It's my pet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, yeah. the last question. Last, last question. Uh, what is what's it like living with other students? Do you have experience living in a student housing? Uh, uh, not student housing, but more like not the dorm, mm -hmm. so to say. But yeah, student housing, of course. But I think you just arrived, so maybe you should... Can, can you start mm -hmm. this? Okay, yes, I do live with students, though they're kind of older than me. Some of them are, are masters, some of them are PhD students, mm -hmm. you know, but they sure are students. The difference is that they have more idea of their life. They're, like, they're more, how do you say? Organized? Yes, indeed, because uh, I've seen what it's like living in a student housing, which is so much fun, though. Like, don't get me wrong, because uh, <laughs> you're basically living with your classmates, like, because I've went to my classmates' place. Um, but for me, it's more like more mature, let's say. I like learn a lot from them and learn to take care of myself, which is definitely something that everybody should learn to do, especially when you start uh, being independent and living mm -hmm. by yourself, not with your family anymore. But let's say for me, it was more of a faster transition. I didn't get time to, you know, eat like uh, pasta every day, <laughs> which is something yeah. that I think lots of students can resonate with. True, definitely. I lived in the dorm in my first year living here. And uh, it was definitely a fun experience because we were like a combination of, I don't know, six cultures. So that was actually Only really six. fun. <laughs> Only Could be going. more. Yes. <laughs> that was an unfortunate one. But no, just kidding, it's, just there were just so many people who were sharing their culture with me, cooking different things in the kitchen. And in between all of that, we were just chatting and getting to know each other. And it was definitely more like a mind-opening experience when you come to a different country and not only explore that country, but also kind of indirectly other cultures. And yeah, that really meant a lot for me. And I had a really funny experience actually with uh, having different cultures. I'm a person who's really afraid of spiders. And in my first month, uh, I saw just a small spider in my room, but you know, you're afraid of it, so. And I um, went to the room of uh, my roommate who's living across the hall, and he was from Africa. And he saw the spider, he was like, that's so small, why are you afraid of it? And he just grabbed it with his hands and just put it away so that the spider is unharmed. <laughs> and that was such an experience for me that I still remember it four years later. That, yeah, I don't know, it's just so nice to have people who can help you out and who can also uh, share their own values in that sense. I think it's uh, the, the, usually the flow is like this. So you just arrived at a country, you're super excited to live all by yourself. So the mood was really high, the, everything is so great, you can do whatever you want, right? Nobody tell you it's, it's bad time, to <laughs> go to bed, no, no, no. Uh, but then it will dip down a little bit because you figure, you, turns out you have to do a lot of things when you live alone. You do have to do grocery, you have to cook every day, you have to plan ahead your meal, you have to do the laundry, sometimes ironing. And then, yeah, and then you can get a little bit, you can struggle a little bit if you're not familiar with those kind of chores. But then in the end, it will go up, back up because now you, you're an independent person. Mm -hmm. You know how to do all those stuff. And then you can enjoy life again, go out with friends and, or invite them over. And then, yeah, it's going to be fine. So it's, I think it's usually more or less going to be like that. Um, Definitely. Yeah. And then in the end, it's, it's all, it's all going to be a good experience for you. I'm, I'm, I hope, and um, I think I'm sure, but for my for myself, yeah, it, it was really great. Yeah, I'm also convinced that it's going to be a really nice experience mm. once you readjust to the new culture and country. Okay, well, oh. time for Q and A. If you have any questions related to student experience, living in the Netherlands, studying at Han, ask them, and we will answer them. And I see them right here. The first one: How does the students' association work? Maybe Patrick can answer. Um, I had. Uh, a, a six months working for the ISB community, so the International Student uh, School of Business uh, uh, Associations. So I work with staff uh, from the university organizing events for students. Uh, it could be from fun or uh, how say it like uh, 
knowledge wise, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, very uh, intelligent stuff. Um, so it could be sometimes sometimes you actually actually have to take responsibility. It's just not just all fun and games, right? But mm -hmm. you also have a sense of responsibility and um, plan ahead working with other students as well or staff. And uh, it would it would actually give you some experience and then I think you can also put that in your CV that you work yeah, with the sure. student associations, uh, planning, organizing events or doing social medias. If you are a communication student, I think that also will really help uh, helpful Definitely. decorate uh, your, your CV. Yeah, and in general, I think that when it comes to student associations, it really depends what type it is, because they can be mm -hmm. uh, founded by the students, they can be more university level, they are just really different in that sense. But no matter which type it is, it will definitely be a very useful experience to join the student association, to maybe try to organize an event yourself or do some sort of work, because indeed you can put it on your CV later on, you can use it in uh, further developing as a specialist, um, once you understand what you want to do in the future. So yeah, I would definitely recommend to join. The next question, what do you like the least about living in the Netherlands? Any uh... Honesty time. <laughs> yeah, it should be the weather, because I think in the Netherlands it's just so pretty, but sometimes it's, I don't know, I have these, um, how do you call like seasonal depression <laughs> sometimes, yeah. and especially yeah. when your autumn is rainy and your winter is cold and it's just like a whole thing but i'm trying like to get out of this to get out of my comfort zone to try to make it fun nevertheless especially in nijmegen and usually they're at like five o'clock or four there is nobody else at, n like nobody on the street there is like nothing and it's dark at this point and you're just coming home from school and you're like I just feel like I have to go to sleep now. I feel like a grandma, <laughs> but you know, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, but yeah. once it like right now, it's very, very nice. You know, it's well, it's a bit rainy, but that's not so much. And the weather is getting warmer and it's just I feel life coming back to me, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like for me, what helped me with uh, the rain situation and no sun, I started romanticizing that. I started okay. being like, oh, now I can uh, wrap myself in a blanket, make myself some hot chocolate and all of that stuff but that you see on Pinterest. And that actually really helped. So I think it's good if you stay inside the, <laughs> the yeah, rain. Yeah. Well, I think it's the weather thing. You know, disliking the weather is more like the weather is sometimes it's really unpredictable. So mm -hmm, one tip, true. you always have to check the weather before going out. Maybe it's sunshine. But then it's uh, um, negative degree, or maybe mm -hmm. it's about to rain, but it doesn't rain. It just looks like that, but it doesn't rain for the whole day, or it just decides to rain for three days in a row. So it, it, it really, you cannot really predict the weather. You have to check it every time. And then, um, yeah, that, that is something that I, I dislike you know, uh, about the weather in the Netherlands. But other than that, yeah, I cannot think of really thing that really bugging me, to be honest. Yeah, I also don't, except for like rain and the unpredictability, I don't think there is anything. And I actually think that in a way the weather situation has taught me to appreciate the nature in general and kind of more don't try to go against it, but accept the fact that, well, today it's gonna rain. Yeah. That's it. And I feel like the Netherlands in general are um, a country where um, people take pride in looking after nature and uh, being more eco-friendly, sustainable. Oh, yeah. And one example, actually, recently, I think two days ago or yesterday, they closed a whole track in the country because the badgers live too close to it and that is so sweet in my opinion that they didn't want to disturb nature and actually try to look after them and make them go away naturally mm -hmm. that's so sweet so yeah, yeah you have yeah, advantages right. and disadvantages <laughs> okay next one what is the coolest thing you have done in the netherlands for me it's king's day to be honest i i, mm. I used to have almost 24 hours straight uh, staying up with my friends from the evening before to the afternoon of the, the day after. Wow. So yeah, that, that was a long and a fun, very fun exper experience. So yeah, that's, that's it. That's one for me. For me, I think carnival. 
That's another really huge celebration in the Netherlands. And uh, you just dress up. Sometimes you um, make your own costume and people are all like, I don't know, either in those onesies uh, as a dinosaur or something like that. And you just see people going in groups and they are so colorful because everyone dressed up in some character or something that they like. And uh, yeah, you just party, you smile, you listen to music, and there are also those uh, parades in the, the yeah. cities. And yeah, it's just really, really cool. So it's the European Halloween, huh? Yeah, kinda, <laughs> kinda. <laughs> Have you, what about you? I did. I missed the carnival because oh. I was in Amsterdam, and they like don't celebrate it in the northern part. You know, the the carnival is celebrated in the southern part only. Uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it next year. And I feel like the coolest thing did did not happen yet, but it will happen in in like in a few in like two weeks when there is the Go Short Festival, and I'm volunteering for it. It's a oh. short film festival, and I'm very excited for it. And I feel like. It's gonna be a blast, you know. Cool. Yeah, so you can do a lot of things in here, just pick and choose pretty much. Any advice on how to find housing? Mm. Well, for my experience, usually Facebook group is the way to go. Um, depends on the city. So I don't know about all the city, but usually every city have their own Facebook group. They are posting a room for rent. Usually here you actually have to looking for room, uh, actively looking for room. So it's um, not the nice, uh, it's, how to say it, it's, it could be difficult at time to, to find one. But yeah, usually for me it's, it's a Facebook group and also there are websites that you can uh, looking for a room as well. Uh, I have to uh, say this, but uh, be careful. Uh, don't uh, transfer the money before you sign the contract. Good uh, point. Yeah. So I am, I, I, um, well, accidentally I have to say that I came across a lot of cases of students um, got uh, scammed, uh, harsh to say, uh, really uh, sad uh, mm -hmm. cases. But yeah, that's just one tip that you should really keep in mind that, uh, that nothing is done until you sign a contract. And then also the contract might be in Dutch, so it's good that to, uh, you, to give it to anyone that actually speak the language to check it for you. Definitely a good yeah. tip because uh, when I was looking for rooms and apartments and whatever type of housing doesn't really matter, you always have to check the contract, really take the time to read it, don't sign just anything, don't skip through pages. It's really important that you take care of yourself in your future housing situation and take it as a big responsibility. Not to say that it's really complicated and hard and it's impossible, no. But you just have to take those things into account. So yeah. And also, today we're going to have uh, a session about admission visa and housing. So if you're interested in housing and you want to know more details, then join it. It's going to happen relatively soon after this one. So stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions that you might have, you can still message them to us. And um, yeah, I see that there are no more questions. So yeah, I would say that let's finish on one final tip for the students coming to the Netherlands from each one. Okay, well, okay, I can start with this one. I would say prioritize making connections. That's definitely one of like my main tips uh, because you're gonna meet so many people with from so many different cultures and you're gonna make like lifelong friendships with them make sure that you keep them and that you like always say yes that's that's what i i think you should follow like when you get some offer from a friend or somebody invite you somewhere just say yes you don't know but you surely are gonna have a great time so try to submerge yourself into the culture into the student life and just have fun that's a good one what about you patrick uh, can you go first? I, I'm still <laughs> trying to think. Okay. Well, uh, my final tip would be to indeed talk to more people, but also try to explore the country by yourself to understand if this is the place that actually fits you. Because I think that as an international student, you are moving to a different culture. There are many differences. There are many advantages, disadvantages. And sometimes you just have to take a step back and reflect, okay, what about this? Do I like this? How do I want to live? Um, do I like the um, mentality here? And just really ask yourself those questions because it's 
you know, it's your future, so make sure that you enjoy this part really much, but also try to ask yourself questions for later, later stages in life. And uh, since the ladies are talking about the fun part, I'm saying something that is a little bit less fun. Uh, trying to organize uh, every, everything, uh, a lot of things. So when you should do the groceries, when, which, um, if you cook, how, much is a, how, how large is the portion you want to cook for tomorrow, a lunch, if you don't go home tomorrow, lunch as well. And uh, if you have um, a project, project coming up, when should you meet your friend? When is the deadline? Uh, trying to stay organized, trying to stay on top of things mm -hmm. because um, you really don't want to pile things up and then mm -hmm. because you live alone. So it's, it's sometimes th things can be very quite stressful uh, in certain uh, times. So yeah. basically for the exam week, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, so that's my general rule. So try start to plan ahead a little bit. Maybe just for the weekend. For this weekend, it's only it's it's just small step like that, mm -hmm. and then it will prevent. Uh, sorry, not prevent, but prepare you uh, for the future for the, the career as well. Uh, in in the future, you will have to plan longer time. Maybe next month uh, for the month ahead or the whole year maybe. Don't, if you are really uh, yeah. uh, immersed in the Dutch culture, then definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, so organize yourself for sure. I definitely mm. agree with that. Just try to stay healthy, cook well for yourself, try to mm -hmm. stay organized when it comes to schoolwork, and yeah, and everything's gonna be fine. Yep, gonna be fun. Yes. Okay, then thank you very much for watching us, and good luck. <laughs>